that you're going to like your game. Um, you know, we all like to think that we're beautiful and unique snowflakes, but we're not. So there are going to be other people out there who share your crazy tastes and passions and just go, yeah, I want to play that game too. So you're guaranteed to find some people and they're going to like it a lot, which is much better than having a game that lots of people kind of hate. Um, motivation. This is a huge one. Usually if you're working on a feature for a game, you're thinking, yeah, this feature, this is going to increase my sales and it's going to, like, you know, maybe I'm going to get a better review score and that's all going to happen months down the line when you finish the game. If you actually enjoy playing your game already, then adding a new feature is fucking awesome because the game gets better and you get to enjoy it even more. So you get that instant gratification. That's, that's pretty much why I get up in the morning. Um, and you can actually, you can flip that as well. If you're ever working on something that seems kind of disinteresting and boring, like, like writing press releases or a website or that kind of thing, I just find it's useful just to try and find a way to make that task interesting to me um, before I go ahead with it and then I'll actually get it done and hopefully it'll be more interesting to other people as well. Um, sometimes I just can't find a way that I've wasted some time, so there's definitely a risk in that. But, you know, I find it works. And um, we make games because we want to, right? Like, otherwise we'd all be off just working normal IT jobs earning much more money. So why make games if we don't actually enjoy playing? Right. Simple. So anyway, I think fucking rocks. Um, now I'm going to assume that everybody else is going to talk about what happens after you have the idea, like the topic suggested, because I'm going to go the other way and talk about beforehand instead. Um, and the obvious place to start there is like where you come up with ideas. So I'm not really trained in neuropsychology, something, something. Right? I'm, I'm not particularly well read. I don't read that. Um, <laughs> maybe we have to come up with other ideas for a way to come up with new ideas. Anyway. Um, I'm just making this shit up. And in order to discuss this, I really need to talk about procedural content generation. Um, so procedural content generation, for those who aren't very familiar with it, is where you write software um, that creates your maps and your, your scenarios and your game world and, and things like that in your game for you that you would otherwise normally do by hand. Now, the reason that really is important to me is as somebody who wants to experience their content for the first time, because I'm, I'm trying to engage in selfish design and just enjoy the game, I need that to be made for me. If I was to hand make all the maps and puzzles and things, I'd never get the player experience. That's why I care. Unfortunately, most procedural content is really dull. Um, so thinking about that got me to thinking about why is it dull? What is it about the quality of content that procedural stuff is kind of failing on? And it got me thinking, okay, so if dull is bad, then maybe the, the value of your game content Maybe not exactly equal to the number of ideas, but at least very heavily influenced by that. So that just sent, sets the very simple challenge of writing some software that comes up with ideas, which um, <laughs> is maybe a good idea, maybe not. I don't know. Um, anyway, maybe it's really easy, I don't know. Um, so, so I want to do that, but obviously just trying to make something that's a little bit hard. Uh, so I thought I'd attack the problem in a different direction and just think about procedural stuff that has actually kind of worked okay. And because it, apparently I live in a bubble or something, I can only think of my own games. So I made this game here, Wrong Check Fail, uh, a couple years ago. And in it, quick recap, you might be playing as Link from The Legend of Zelda and fighting up against uh, an asteroid from Asteroids that you guessed at. And then later on, there'll be Pac Man that you're playing as, and there'll be the balls from Pac. And you, you basically end up with all of these matchups of your a particular game character, and you're up against different ones. And, and they, they will act properly. Now, each of these pairings shown here is. It's a different scenario, and it's kind of like a different idea. And each one is comprised of the idea of one character and the idea of another. So in this very specific example, you could think that, okay, so maybe an idea is just the ju juxtaposition of a couple of different ideas, right? And I just thought, well, fuck it, can I expand on that? And as I was thinking about different ideas and how you might describe them and decompose them, they all kind of followed this pattern as well, that an idea is just other ideas kind of juxtaposed together. So this, this sounds like it might be a bit circular and useless, um, but because the first idea is different to the second two, it actually makes more of a pyramid structure. So there's, there's something going on there. Um, so that's when I pulled out my ass idea of what ideas might be. Um, and using that, I can then think about my process for coming up with ideas, which goes something like this. Um, first of all, I obsess about something. Usually it's something a little bit abstract, so in the case of a check fail, it's like, gee, remixing is cool, how can we do that in games? Because, you know, you save a lot of time when you just remix other people's music, maybe I could just mix games that way, and make some interesting stuff. 
Um, but just think about that got me nowhere. So then consuming other ideas, which you do because you're out and about in the world, or, you know, Canberra, at least where I am. But um, <laughs> you, you encounter some ideas, usually on the internet, and um, I saw something called a video game name generator. So this is a website that comes up with names for video games and suggests them to you. Just by, just by mixing up different words, usually names of scenario, uh, places and characters, and it just kind of puts them together. And that still didn't quite get me there. What I needed to do then was juxtapose, um, which I think Adam was describing as the thing that happens when you're showering, running, or crapping. Um, you basically, you just need some downtime, and provided you have these other ideas buzzing about in your head, they'll eventually fly and, and, and come up with something new. But I think the important thing about it is, is the obsessing thing. Like, if you've got a really, really vague idea, and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere, it doesn't mean you should stop thinking about it, because if you just keep getting back to it, then eventually something else will give you the inspiration to turn it into something useful. Um, yeah, so I think it's actually kind of a valuable thing to do. Very quickly, don't wait. If you don't have a great idea for a game, just make something anyway, because maybe you'll have a great idea halfway through. Or better yet, you know, it's okay to make bad games anyway. Every game I've ever made that's been in any way successful has been built on the back of a lot of really shitty failure games, like just having tech in place and websites and, and all that kind of stuff, learning to make an install. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great to just jump in there. So my recommendations are make stuff, obsess and shower, but most importantly, do what makes you happy because it's, it's going to make other people happy too. Thank you. Today, I want to talk about Stunt Run. Oops, what's that name? Hey. Stunt Run. Uh, I want to talk you through the development of the game because this really shows my process and how I evolved an idea from the idea that I drew the best product that people play. Um, my inspiration for this particular game came from Charles H. Dick, if anyone knows it. It's awesome. Uh, you can sit on a couch with a mate and pan control between you because it gets so hard. You get the general idea, it's a, a guy on a motorbike, so you go over ramps and jumps and basically the aim is to get to the end. Uh, it's really, really good. Download it. I won't get any position, it's alright. Uh, where am I? Yeah, cool. I start basically all my games in my tech book. Uh, this is the start of the run. So I saw the Xbox Live game, I wanted to evolve it into something. So you can see there's a Dude on the bike, you know, that sort of implies that. Um, there's some hills and ramps to go up. Again, I'm just playing with shapes, doing stuff, just working it out. And this one, especially, you'll see when you see the final game, we start getting like that. Uh, there's usually a lot more to it than that, but this is good enough. Um, okay. 
My next steps would be prototyping. I need to test whether the idea is going to be fun. Um, can I actually make this? Because I use Flash. Flash is very sort of low power compared to the other technologies out there, like Unity, where you get this amazing power, you know, lots, lots of gels and that sort of thing. Um, so here's uh, four different prototypes I made for developing this game. Uh, you can see I'm messing around with some boxes and wheels, trying to make a few of some description, a few objects. Uh, I basically established that, yep, I can do this. Uh, I've really had trouble with Box CD. I'm not the best at anything really, but I'll just do the character. But you'll also notice there's a lack of a rider because uh, I just couldn't crack it. I just I had no idea what I was doing. So anyway, I ditched the uh, rider and work in the car. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that'll do. Uh, now I, I bought this 3D model for the game, but I just want to say the game looks nothing like this. Just to crack the fight because it is flat. Game description document. Uh, I do write game description documents, but they're generally so that I can list out ideas that I would like in the game. Uh, most of this, this is actually for a different game, but it's a car one and it seems relevant. Most of this is never made it into the final game, but you can you can see where I was going. I just write it all down, just put it there, and then once you throw it against the wall, see what sticks, you know, see, see what you can actually make. Uh, there is game story out there. That's because I do actually write the theme of what I want in the game. I've stripped it out to this, but you know, I do write these things down. What's the theme? What's the setting? What's the goal of the game? Where are you, you, know, where are you trying to achieve? What do you have to pick up? Um, and then, obviously, I'll do this. Um, to do, I live my life by a to-do list. I uh, ask my wife every morning when I'm just uh, pull out to-do list what I have to do today. Um, this is from Stuntrun. You can see it all checked off. So Looks like I finished the game. Um, this is probably around half the list that I did for Stuntrun. Generally, a game will be about 90 to 100 to do items. They're sometimes very general uh, or sometimes very specific. Uh, if there's anything, you, you see what I'm up to anyway. Uh, level design. I, I particularly want to talk about this game because I took a different approach to level design. Um, I cut out bits of paper. Uh, I didn't want to build a level editor. Uh, a few of you will know, and I know Chris down there knows about building level editors. He's awesome at it. Um, I hate it. I just can't stand it. It's like building a whole game just to make a game. Um, so I thought, that let's experiment. Let's do a different approach. I cut out this paper to represent the items I used in the game. And then started mapping them down on the grid paper. I don't recommend doing this if you're in a hurry or if you're trying to be efficient. It's terrible. It's really, really bad. You then got to go and map all those coordinates and then data entry into Excel and find out that each of the items is placed in the wrong spot and you need to move it by three pixels. And yeah, you're a bad idea. Um, so, <laughs> so I ended up going for this, which is using the Flash IDE. Uh, Mark Fennell suggested it and it was a great idea. Um, you basically place the items down and set up a little bit of code and a couple of all the XML for you. Really quick, nice way to do it. But the cutting out the paper method, I would recommend trying because you get to see your level from God's view. You know, you really, you can imagine the car going over the ramps and, and it just gives you a completely different understanding of level design. I really enjoy doing it. Um, designing my games, I generally do everything, um, but now I rely on Facebook photo a lot. I, I determine what my game will look like by what I can buy and what I can alter. Um, uh, in this game, you can see there's a certain amount of items. This is pretty much all the items that I made up the game with. I did all this sort of stuff in Illustrator. In the back, I think you can see the, um, the trees and the city, and there's some cards on the side. It's just ice like photo art that I bought and blurred and piled across. The objects at the top are the actual physics objects, so you can see what I mapped down. So you can see what, you know, I'm trying to get this idea out, and I'm working with this tool set. And, mm -hmm. yeah. um, the finished game. No, I had a few notes there, sorry. That's the intro screen. Oh, it's so awesome. Oh, it's just that. <laughs> um, I had to cut out a lot of features. In, uh, in the original game, I wanted to, or in my original intention of the game, I wanted to do so you could flip and get you know, 360 points and all that sort of stuff. But when I was actually trying to make a game, it was incredibly difficult for me to, to code that. So, 